are on the road tonight in the state of Pennsylvania. Harrisburg, the state capital, as ballroom boxing is on the road for the very first time. Hi again, everybody. I'm Larry Michael, back with John Saraceno. It's good to be back with you tonight for ballroom boxing. Good to have John back ringside. And for the first time ever, we've left the friendly confines of Michael's 8th Avenue, headed up the road to Harrisburg. We're at the Zumbo Temple, where the fans expect the excitement, the competition that we see in the ballroom. They expect it here tonight, John. Well, it's the same type of venue, Larry, in that we have theater-type seating actually in a balcony type level, plus seating on the lower level, makes for a very loud crowd up and close looking for great fight action. The fighters are ready, some good matchups on tap. And you know, in talking to the fans here, John, uh, they've watched ballroom boxing on TV for the last couple of years. They're, they're very excited, almost impatient to see the action get underway. Well, it took 31 shows for us to get up here. This is our 32nd show, finally got on the road. Promoter Scott Wagner wants to take it regionally, and who knows, Larry, maybe one day nationally. We hope you're ready. Our first fight is in the ring when we return. Ballroom boxing on the road for the very first time. Ballroom boxing is brought to you by Toyota every day. By Budweiser, the king of beers. By Geico. 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. By LastMinuteTravel.com. By Zero2080.com. And by WhatANetwork.com. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing on the road in Harrisburg. Let's get our first spot started. Our ring announcer tonight, Fred Blumstein. Fred. This first bout is scheduled for four rounds and is in the welterweight division. The referee for this bout is Gary Rosado. Introducing first out of the red corner to my right, wearing the solo black trunks. He weighed in this morning at an even 159 pounds. His record, three wins against seven defeats. From Palmer Park, Maryland, let's welcome Lawrence the Crusher Brooks. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner to my left. He weighs 150 pounds. His professional record, an undefeated one. Two wins. One of his wins coming by way of knockout. From Columbia, Pennsylvania, here is Kermit the Killer Cintron. Cintron and Brooks. Four Brooks rounds. Harris Junior. Let's take a look, John Saraceno, at the matchup. Okay, well, you, you see the, the heights basically right similar. Lawrence Brooks with a sizable weight advantage, nine pounds. Both two young fighters tonight, Larry. Citron only 20, Lawrence Brooks 23. Brooks from Palmer Park, Maryland. Kermit Citron from Columbia, PA. Where's Columbia, PA, John? You're the native. Yeah, somewhere outside uh, Harrisburg. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John Saraceno uh, knows Joe Paterno personally and hope to see Joe Pond in the house tonight here in Harrisburg. These two fighters, Citron calls himself the killer, Brooks calls himself the crusher, and with Chuck Bednarik, the old uh, one off your eagle, eagle linebacker, yeah. couldn't have a better uh, matchup for names anyway. So Citron hanging out before the fight with the crowd and kind of was schmoozing around. I'm not so sure that he is ready to get started. If I were Lawrence Brooks from Palmer Park, Maryland, I'd try to get started fast here. You may notice the Puerto Rican colors on Citron's trunks. He was born in Puerto Rico, moved to uh, Columbia, which is actually near Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is not too far from here. Favorite fighter, no surprise, Felix Trinidad, Tito. Nice combination by Citron early. This battle in the welterweight division, scheduled for four rounds. Steve Brooks having a hard time with his balance right now, John. I, I think that maybe he's tasted that right hand of Citron already. Well, both fighters, I think, trying to get their timing down. Citron Sweeping left hand by yeah. Citron comes up a little short. Now, Citron's going to have butterflies, too, even though this is not his pro debut. His pro debut was uh, the first week of October. So this fight, a, f a second one, and a, uh, just to begin his career, really. Battling those butterflies. Always a difficult thing when a fighter turns pro. Let's see how he handles it here against Brooks. Brooks known as the crusher. 
Citron needs some room to throw his punches, John. He cannot get inside on Brooks. Well, he's trying to jab Citron, but he's not throwing it with enough authority. Nice right hand by Kermit Citron. He's got a pretty good uh, crowd following him here tonight in Harrisburg. Good right hand by Citron. Brooks holding that left hand down low, and he's paying the price, tasting the right hand of Citron. The last right hand rattled Brooks a bit, John. Another big right hand by Citron. Citron moving forward. Really, Brooks offering no offensive resistance right now, and very little defensive resistance either. Well, Citron's been able to basically use his jab and keep Crusher on the outside, and then he falls up with that long right hand, and there you saw it. Oh, good body shot by Citron. Crusher's hurt. Brooks is in deep trouble. His leg is bent underneath, and he is in bad shape. Up against the ropes. Referee Gary Rosado County. Stop it. And this fight is over. A first round knockout for Kermit Citron. Got Brooks up against the ropes and would not let him off. Well, Brooks is really dazed, Larry. That long right hand that Cintron was used, set up by his jab, and he finally got his timing down on it. He had hit him with it earlier, but certainly not that flush. As you see Cintron walking over to the Brooks to see if he's okay. Brooks being worked on by the doctors here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And he has not gotten up from that brutal right hand. Actually, it was a combination. He was stunned up against the ropes. Well, he was up against the ropes, and maybe that was a function of the fact you noticed early in the round his legs didn't seem to be underneath him. Went right to the ropes, and he got caught along the ropes and really got drilled. Cintron, you know, really fancies himself more of a boxer than he does a puncher. He's got to be pleased with that tonight. Taking a look at how this fight ended. In the first round, at the end of the first round, it had been scheduled for four rounds. Sixth round in the white trunks. It was that left hand to the body that really hurt Brooks. He lowered his hand, Citron threw another jab, and in a crushing right hand, the fight was over. So the end comes at the end of the first round. Kermit Citron is the winner. And let's go to Fred Blunstein with the official word. Fred? Boxing fans, referee Gary Rosado reaches the count of 10 at two minutes and 59 seconds of the first round. And your winner by knockout, and still undefeated, Kermit the Killer Cintron. Cintron gets it done in impressive fashion here in the ballroom in Harrisburg. Hey, joining us tonight is Ryan Collins, the former Baltimore Raven. Let's check in with Ryan, who's standing by with a very special interview. Hey, I'm here with Randy King. Randy, what do you do for the town of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? I work for the mayor of Harrisburg, Mayor Stephen R. Reed, and we're just delighted to have you here this evening. Now, what makes you come out to these fights? Well, I've always loved boxing, and we've never really had great professional boxing in Harrisburg, so Michael's Productions is the first time that we've had such an excellent show, and I just encourage everyone to come back out. Uh, when you come back, hopefully you'll come back. So you do see a, a future in this? Oh, it's terrific. It's great fights. It's been first round knockouts. It's full of excitement. It's clearly the most professional first class production I've ever seen boxing in the central Pennsylvania region. Thank you very much, Randy. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Ryan Collins. Back with more ballroom boxing in a moment. Welcome back to ballroom boxing. We're in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. John, you're a native Pennsylvanian. You seem to have a little bit of a home field advantage over me here. Well, I like that. I know where to put you. Got to put you in your place here in the Keystone State. <laughs> we may have to call Joe Paterno and his boys for help, but they're not having such a good season, so we may, uh, you know, put the X-N-A on that. Don't forget, ballroom boxing fans, I am a native of Maryland. Our next fight is in the ring. The Terps. Yes. Dembo, ballroom boxing here presents this four-round bout in the lightweight division. The referee in charge is Tom Wolf. Introducing the boxers. First, out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks, trimmed with white, weighing 138 and a half pounds. He is from the Four Star Boxing Club in Scranton, PA, with a record of 0-1. Please welcome 
Wakimi Young. To my left, out of the blue corner, from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, weighing 139 and a half pounds, the blue trunks with black. His record, a perfect 5-0. and oh. Please welcome Sterling Gethers. Gethers and Young. A four-round lightweight battle. John Saraceno, take a look at the matchup. Well, really very even in terms of height and weight. A good reach advantage for Gethers. And he's only 22, Young 26, 0-1. Do you have any questions? Okay, touch him up, go back to the corner. Referee Tony the Wolf with the final instructions for these two lightweights. Gethers with a record of 5-0. and oh. As promoter Scott Wa uh, Wagner said, the 0-1 guy wanted to fight the 5-0 and oh guy. Which is unusual. Usually when you have a guy who hasn't won a fight, he's only had one fight, he doesn't want to fight a guy 5-0. and oh. But what happened there was Bikini Young twice beat Sterling Gathers as amateurs, and uh, Young really wanted this fight, so they made it. Gathers in the blue trunks with the black trim. Wakimi Young in the black trunks with the white trim. See Wakimi Young in a crouch, a very unorthodox style shown by Wakimi Young. Fight a schedule for four rounds. You have two guys that fought the fought each other in amateurs like that. You have to be careful that it doesn't become a pseudo amateur fight with them knowing a little bit about each other. Maybe knowing too much about each other, huh? No headgear, smaller gloves, wide punching by Young. You see his inexperience. I want to thank our proud sponsors of Ballroom Boxing who have made it possible for us to hit the road. Zero to 80, whatanetwork.com. Claire Channel, Clarion Hotel and Conference Center, and lastminutetravel.com, along with our top sponsor, Toyota, bringing you the Ballroom Boxing Series. You see, you could tell Gethers a little bit more poised, patient. And you saw a big mistake there by wow. Young trying to throw that uppercut from so far outside, a very dangerous move. So he left himself wide open. Well, he likes to throw that uppercut, not with much effectiveness here in the first round. He's really throwing it from a distance, John. I don't know if he is hoping to reach some chin there with that punch. He's going to need more than hope the way he's throwing it. You better hope he doesn't get hit with a counter. Together is just trying to figure out what direction Young's coming from. Get his timing Listen, down. Keep your hand off his face. Fuck. Together's trying to use that jab. You see his hand speed and foot speed. Quick fighter. Young has some quickness. Right. Joaquimi, you're holding. And on paper, you said this might even be an even tight match, but Young. Still showing some amateurish ways. And he does leave himself open. And he lets Gathers know that he hit him a little bit low. Kind of an uneven first round here. Gathers a little frustrated. And fighting a guy unorthodox like Young will frustrate you. First round of the books. More to come from the ballroom in Harrisburg. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saraceno, John Scheinman along as well. We're in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania tonight. First road trip for the Ballroom Boxing crew. I understand John Saraceno and John Scheinman stepped out a little bit last night. <laughs> it got a little wild, huh, guys? <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, John Saraceno's no, home state. Oh, big right hand, and I'm not so sure. Yeah, it was a good shot. Wow, he's hurt. He is hurt. Wakimi Young lands that uppercut. Together struggling to get up, he gets up. His legs, His are legs everywhere. Are, and under him really, and the referee, Tony Wolf, is gonna call a halt to it. My goodness! Oh. My goodness, maybe he should have let it go. He was unbeaten at 5-0. Well, Gathers at that point had seemed to recover and was looking at 
at the referee and with his gloves up as if ready to go, and that's right when he called it. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna second guess the referee. He's standing right in front of the fighter. He can look into his eyes. That's what he calls. Well, that came out of nowhere, John Serestino. Big upset as Wakimi Young with the one punch shot. I think it was the uppercut with the I'm right coming, hand. Baby. Thought Gavin's oh, coming in. I'm coming, baby. You were busy I'm telling coming, a story baby. about me and I'm coming, baby. stepping out. And John you know going out. I'm we didn't coming, even go baby. out last night. I'm telling you what, the I'm end came quickly, and you can one. see Wakimi Young is pumped, paying back his former amateur competitor. Let's see how it ended. It was the uppercut underneath. It was underneath. that same uppercut he's been trying to land all night, and he lands it. And it makes Gathers look like a fish out of water with his right leg just not able to extend and get any, any weight behind it. It was an ugly knockout, ugly looking knockout. Gathers is okay. If you would have told me he was going to knock him out with one of those uppercuts tonight, I would have called you a stone cold liar. He hit him down low. Unbelievable end to that fight. Take another look. Watch the right hand of the man on your right. But he's a lot closer when he throws it from down low and down inside instead of way from the outside. Keep an eye, here's the punch right there. There it is. He leaned right into it. There bent are. right over, Gethers did. Right into the shot. So Akimi Young evens his record to one and one, sending Sterling Gethers to defeat for the first time in his career. Well, he kept throwing it, particularly in that first round. And that was a round we gave Gethers 10-9, but second round all over. Let's get the official time from Pat, Pat O'Malley. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The winner by TKO, 35 seconds into round two, his first professional victory, Wakimi Young. So Wakimi Young, the upset winner, setting Sterling Gethers to defeat for the first time. Gethers record now, five and one. Wakimi Young now levels it at one and one. So it was Wakimi Young, the upset winner in the second round. That punch came out of nowhere. After watching him in the first round, I thought I had visions of Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield again with Dust Buster missing the uppercut and getting countered, but this time it worked out. Let's see what the key to that fight was. John Scheinman standing by with the winner, Wakimi Young. In the first round, Larry Michaels was talking about how you were a little bit too far away to throw that uppercut and you were trying to zing it. In the second round, you got in perfect position. Yeah, well, what happened was I was just trying to set him up. What it is is I was baiting and fating him. My, my trainer, John Blank, he told me, you know, you could fate him, you know, bait him. I bait him with the long punches, make him think I'm uneducated, sucked him right in, he came right in, boom. Now, you fought this guy twice in the amateurs. I think you beat him both times. Yeah. Promoter Scott Wagner says you were calling him out for this fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling everybody out. Listen, everybody thinks that I'm just like a flash in the pan or something like that. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been in the ring. I've been, in, I've been sparring with many of world champions. I'm known in the boxing circles, but I just got to get my respect the old-fashioned way. I'm going to earn it. And I want all undefeated fighters out here to know I'm coming. I'm coming. My power is real. Nobody at 135 to 140 could beat me. I can't hurt me. Let's call this a coming out party for Wakimi Young. Explosive knockout in the second round over his rival Sterling Gethers. Let's go back to Larry and John. Boy, Wakimi Young certainly talking the talk, John. Very confident guy. Doesn't lack for uh, confidence, and uh, we'll see how far it can carry him. Stick around. More ballroom boxing coming up after a break. Welcome back to ballroom boxing. Brought to you tonight by Budweiser, the king of beers. Hey, joining us tonight is Ryan Collins, the former Baltimore Raven. Let's check in with Ryan, who's standing by with a very special interview. I'm here with Sterling Gathers. Sterling, do you think uh, they should have stopped the fight at the second round when you got knocked down? The corner said they should have, but I felt like I was, you know, my, hair was, my head was about to clear up, and I would have got right back to doing what I really had to do. But I felt, you know, Tony's the ref, and the ref's in there to protect us. So I'm sure he did what he, you know, I'm sure he did a good job. Now, do you see a, do you see a rematch in the future? Definitely, man. That should never happen. I mean, I took it on short notice. No excuses. You know, he caught me with a good punch. He was hungry. You know, I kind of overlooked him, but hey, it happens. It's part of boxing. But I'm coming back, and I will be up there. Definitely. All right. Thanks, Sterling. Good luck, man. Thank you very much, Ryan Collins. We're back in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Larry Michael, John Saraceno, Ballroom Boxing. Scorpion Bawa, unbeaten from Totowa, New Jersey, in the ring. 
9-0. and Let's get the official in intros from Pat. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, Executive Director Greg Serve, Commissioner George Picado, and Ballroom Boxing on Michaels 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland, promoter Scott Wagner, matchmaker Josh Hall, present this eight-round bout in the super middleweight division. The referee in charge is Gary Rosado. Introducing the boxers. First, to my left, out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold, weighing 169 pounds from Holyoke, Massachusetts, with a record of 11 and 14, five via the KO. Please welcome Derek Double Impact Whitley. Out of the red corner, wearing the trunks red, green, and yellow, weighing 167 pounds. He is from Taroa, New Jersey, with a record of 9 and 0, 7 via the KO. Please welcome Adimi Scorpion Bawa. Scorpion Bawa from Accra, Ghana, unbeaten 9 and 0. Boxing out of the Lou Duva Boxing Stable. John Saracino, let's take a look at the matchup. Okay, John, I'll give you a question. Bawa, you see a six footer. Got a height advantage over Derek Whitley, who we've seen before in this series. And a reach advantage. And a nice youth advantage. 23 years old, Whitley, 32. Derek Whitley is a very, very tough guy. Could take a good shot. Derek was. Uh, been in the ballroom many times at Michael's 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland. Comes to town in March, last March, fought Dana Rucker. Knocked Dana out in the first round. Went up against George Barksdale, beat him soundly. Next, Alan Watts beat him. This kid can fight. And last month he had another win, Tyler Hughes. So Whitley, better than his 12 and 14 record would indicate. Bawa on the way up at 9 and 0. You mentioned before, hot Lou Duba prospect. Lou not here this evening. He's been on the show several times. Lou putting back together his boxing empire after the a bitter split. Derek Whitley has uh, turned around his career after the slow start. He is 12 and 1. Oh, another left-hander. We always see a lot of them on the ballroom boxing series. Oh, feeling out process not greeted warmly by the fans. Fans love the action here in Harrisburg, just like they do in Glen Burnie. Scorpion Bawa, very tall man for the super middleweight division. Looks like his frame could put on more weight. Heavily muscled as it is. Very slow start to this fight with Bawa. Bawa really not, Whitley. yeah, Bawa not pressing the action here. Well, maybe he hasn't fought many left-handers. Being very cautious in the opening minutes of the first round of the Schedule 8 rounder between the super middleweights. Weight limit, 168 pounds. trying to figure out that southpaw stance. He seems to throw a lead right hand or something. Here. So you look on Bawa's face, very little action. The crowd getting impatient. He's got a mean scowl on his face. I'd give him a 10 for that, but that's the only 10 I'd give him in this round. 10 for scowling, huh? It's on the all scowl team. Well, Whitley not doing a whole lot either. No. Let's not give him too much credit. Seven knockouts to the credit of Scorpion Bawa. Bawa knows he's allowed to throw a punch. Very little action in round one here 
at Zumbo Temple Ballroom in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the home state of John Saracino. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Tonight we're in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and we're having a great time. I'd like to say thank you to all the people up here who uh, were so nice over the last couple of days. Uh, hospitality was terrific, and the boxing has matched it. Very strange fight in the ring right now as Scorpion Bawa and Derek Whitley are playing a game of chess where neither man wants to make a move. Trying to take a look here at what the opening would be for Bawa. Now he's he's inexperienced. He's nine and zero, oh, but you would think he'd just want to get in there and mix it up a little bit. John, both well, men showing way too much caution here. Yeah. Against the southpaw, you have to be more aggressive. Also, you can't let the southpaw take over because of that stance. And right now, Bawa is being very careful, as if he's never hit him with the left hand there. Pretty good, what uh, Bawa did after missing with the right. Your main attack against the southpaw is not to leave with the jab. Now. It's very off balance and awkward. And I wonder if he knew he, that they were fighting a left-hander. I mean, it doesn't look like he's prepared to fight a left-hander. Looks like he's got no clue at this point how to fight a southpaw. Well, one thing about doing a boxing, I'm sure they knew this would be a left-hander here tonight. You would hope so. Maybe Bawa figures a scowl in his face will scare Whitley. But right now. He's doing more scowling than fighting. And Whitley also keeping a safe distance. He's not exactly looking to mix it up right here. Second round. Bawa trying to work that jab. Line of crouch. Neither man wanting to risk. Left hand by Whitley scores. Big left hand by Whitley again. Bawa's in trouble. Whitley on the attack. Bawa trying to hang on out of nowhere. Lightning strikes from the left hand of Derek Whitley. Was that checkmate in the chess match you were talking about? We'll see. Bawa's legs are not there. Whitley needs some space to throw. The referee's got to get in there and break up that holding. Whitley tagged Bawa with the left hand. Bawa still does not have his leg set. No, he doesn't. He's doing a little goose step out there without even being hit. He scored a 10-8 round for Whitley. Bawa will regroup. We will as well. Back to Harrisburg in a moment. Action for moments ago in the second round. The punch of the fight thus far. The left hand by Derek Whitley coming up. Boy, these guys are quick. <laughs> round three underway here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Larry Michael with John Saraceno. John Scheinman in the pit keeping score. What do you say, John? Well, we've had six minutes of fighting and we've had one punch landed. I've got Derek Whitley ahead 2019. I couldn't see given a 10 8 round there. He landed one shot. He wasn't able to follow up, even though Bawa was just, you know, wobbling all around the ring. I can only give it 10 9 for Whitley. Um, this is a bad um, matchup of, of styles, but I think the power of Whitley's going to come in into the fore here again later in the fight. He's got too much experience. He's on a great roll, and I just think that's going to be the difference. All right, thank you, John. Bawa had some wobbly legs at the end of round two. Seems to have recovered his equilibrium. I guess Bawa has decided he's going to have to fight and throw punches that to win. Because he looks a lot different than he did the first two rounds. He's really closed the distance here. He's got Whitley pinned right in front of us along the ropes. And he's using his size and his, uh, you know, to his advantage. I mean, he is a bigger guy. Look at the scowl on Bawa's face. It's, it's been that way from the very beginning of this fight. The old puss team. What a mug. Really trying to fight off the ropes. Bawa really not effective offensively. Hey, hey. 
Well, when he had him along the ropes here, he was doing some good work. But he's got to impose his will a little bit more. I'd like to see a little more fire. You're talking about a guy who's bigger, he looks stronger. He's got a reach advantage. Now, let's see, a little less scowling, a little more punching. There we go. And Whitley just covering up as if to say, you have to do better than that. Whitley not very aggressive here in the third round. Especially considering that he had rocked Bawa. Yeah. Bawa beginning to go downstairs now on Whitley. Trying to get Whitley to drop those hands because Whitley is exposing his midsection. Bala telegraphing that right hand. Catches Whitley off balance. I'm not sure how hurt Whitley is, but Bawa trying to take advantage of it. Well, he's he's rushing himself, Bawa. Is he's showing his inexperience. He should add that an uppercut on the inside. Because Whitley's open for the uppercut. Whitley was stunned a little bit by that punch. Bawa really not doing much to follow it up. As, Ryan, as round three comes to a close. Not much happening in this bout here in Harrisburg. Action from the third round. Well, Let's see if we catch that punch. It was right there. He was off balance. Whitley was kind of stumbling back as the punch was landed. Bawa started getting some leverage on his shots. It's a tall, rangy puncher. Whitley, the more experienced of the two. This fight is heating up a little bit here in the fourth round. I've got a 29-28 Whitley. Let's see what Whitley's going to offer this round. Last round, he did very little after nearly out, knocking out, him out, out in the second go, round. Let his arms go. Punch out, punch out. Let's go. Bawa stumbling around even maybe 15, 20 seconds after he got hit. Legs very unsteady. Recovered. Came out. And on our cards, unofficially won the third round. Well, really had Bawa off balance there, but could not convert the left hand. Left hand really bothered Bawa in the first round. Whitney's southpaw stance really bothered him. Did nothing in the first round. And, was, and really appeared out of it in the second round also. But since then, since getting whacked, woke up. Nice right hand by Bawa. Bawa starting to put his punches together. He should be Bad using his size to push Whitley back. He's really hands, more of a finesse hands, fighter is Bawa. Look at the body of Whitley. Yeah, what if Bawa keeps up this aggressive hands, pace that he's shown in the last hands, round and a half? It's difficult for Whitley to get off. And Whitley's had to concern himself with slipping shots, bending low, getting out of the way. And not getting hit. Whitley now getting Bawa in the corner. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Get out of there. Get your arm out of there, Derek. Let's go. What's Punch he going to do with him Punch once out. he has Punch him out. there? That's the question. Punch out. Whitley working the body. Backing off. Good right hand by Bawa. He keeps his hands high. Yeah, he's not the easiest guy to hit. Body is Cleanly. open. Cleanly. Yeah, body is yeah open. his body's been open. Step back, watch the but of course, watch when the you go downstairs like that, you are exposing your own head and taking a bit of a chance. Maybe his corner's not telling him the body punch for fear that Whitley, being so experienced, will negate that and Bow will become vulnerable defensively. Bawa retreating. Whitley pursuing as the round comes to an end. We're back, super middleweight action. Scorpion Bawa in the multicolored trunks going up against Derek Whitley, who's in the black and gold trunks. Whitley trying to pin Bawa in a corner. 
Nice left hand by Whitley in close. Whitley coming out with a little more fire here in this round, John. Well, he needs to. I gave Bauer the last two rounds at the fight even after four. Close fight. Scheduled for eight. Bauer pursuing Whitley. You see Whitley again covering up with the gloves high. He needs to do more of that. Whitley's allowed Bauer to get pretty brave here the last couple of rounds. Bauer's picked up the pace offensively. Whitley really not using a jab. And that's allowing Bauer to really come towards him and not have to look for anything. Clubbing shot by Whitley with the left hand. Bauer in the corner. Bauer needs room to operate. He's Playing into Whitley's hands by going against the ropes. Yeah, I'd like to see him push off and get out of there. Okay, no punch, no punch. Just step back. Wait to listen, guys. Wait to listen. You know, Bawa should be using his size more to his, his advantage. And that's not to say that Whitley's small and weak. He certainly isn't. He's a compact built fighter, and he's strong. But Bawa has a, a reach advantage. And a natural size advantage, he should be using more of those uh, tools he has. Bawa looks a little tired this round. He did a lot of punching the last two rounds. Willie has turned over to the conventional stance now. Yeah, it looks almost like he has Bawa confused. Just not a very heavy puncher. Got seven knockouts out of nine wins, though, John. Well, you know, he may have seven out of nine on his record, and that may be clever matchmaking. But from what I'm seeing here, I don't see, you know, one punch knockout power per se. The fight wears on Whitley and Bawa. Very evenly matched. Close fight. We'll be back with more from Zumbo Temple Ballroom in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in a moment. Action from round five. Derek Whitley got Bawa in a corner. Did some pretty good work. Like we said, a very close fight. John Scheinman, how do you have it scored through five? Scheduled for eight. I tell you, that moment we just saw was Whitley's only moment in the round as far as I saw. I think uh, Scorpion Bawa is beginning to pull away in this fight. I have him ahead 49-47. And although he hasn't done it enough, he has begun to use his size and leverage to, um, to attack Whitley. I think he recognized that Whitley was having problems getting inside and landing his left hook, which is his bread and butter punch. And Bawa, you know, he's still inexperienced, but he's definitely begun to get the job done enough to win these rounds. Bawa with that scowl beginning to stalk Whitley a little bit. Good left hand by Whitley there. I think Whitley is having problems. Trying to land on the inside. The ranginess by Bawa, keeping him on the outside, particularly when Bawa jabs. He's trying to catch Bawa coming in. I think that's becoming his pattern. I wonder how much power Barrett Whitley has and how much power Bawa has. Willie's hands are held low. He's trying to sucker Bawa yes, to come he is. in. He's trying to counter with that left short left hand on the inside, but he hasn't been all effective with uh, trying to do that. Caught him a couple times. Really covering up nicely. Oh, and Bawa charges across the ring. Whitley's forced to cover up. Come on, let's arms go, let's arms go, don't grab him, come on, punch out. With Liam Bawa. Bawa certainly landed more punches in this fight. Well, some of those are pity pats on the inside, but they're landing. And Whitley's not landing enough. 
Off his head, off his head. Fighters looking fatigued here. There's still a couple rounds to go in this fight. Let's go. Off his head. Peppering punches by Whitley really doing no damage to Bawa. Well, Whitley continuing to try to press the action here on the inside. He has been all that effective on the inside. Of course, he can't really fight him from the outside effectively because of the reach disadvantage. A tough fight for Whitley to pull ahead in. Break, break. Watch the head, though. Watch the head. Watch the head. Red for the nice little uppercut by Bawa catching Whitley coming in as the round comes to an end. Let's go. Box. Let's go. Get the water up. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael with John Saracino. Derek Whitley and Scorpion Bawa in the ring right now. Bawa in the multicolored trunks. Whitley in the black trunks with the gold trim. John Scheinman, how do you have it scored? Well, things are heating up right here, but I, I, I got a 59-56 Scorpion Bawa. I was going to say that if this was the, the least focused we've seen Derek Whitley in a long time. We've done his last four bouts, and he's just always so sharp and crisp and focused, and he just, his game plan does not seem focused here. He doesn't seem to be executing well. The idea of pot-shotting Bawa when he comes in fritters away the round every time, and he lets Bawa pile up the points, and uh, just not a good performance so far by Derek Whitley. I think part of that is caused by the size differential and the difficulty that Whitley has had oh, getting on the punch inside. Out, yeah. I mean, clearly, he's been unable to do it effectively. Let's go, get the hands off. Fighter and Dana Rucker. Get the hands off. I think this guy's a little better fighter than Dana Rucker, though. Oh, Might be inexperienced, but I think he's a better all around fighter. Bawan Whitley in a bear Watch hug. Referee Gary Rosado splits the fighters. He just bends his head and stays there for Bawan to hit him. Bawan was hurt early by a left hand by Derek Whitley, but Whitley has not been able to repeat that. And there he's loading up with that left hook. Is Whitley? He senses time is running out. He's got to land the big one. Body shot by Bawa. Really trying to cover up. Don't give Max still has the strength to defend himself. Come on, Squirt. Come on, keep the hands going. Whitley ducks the right hand of Bawa. Right, right. Come on, step back. Bawa unorthodox as he backs away, bent over at the waist. Almost inviting Whitley for the uppercut. That's yeah, a dangerous move. Should be off those ropes, too. Eighth and final round is coming up when we return. Whitley and Bawa touch gloves. Eighth and final round. Here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. John Scheinman, a final look at your scorecard. Does Whitley need a knockout to win? Well, it's going to be real interesting. I've got Bawa ahead 68-66, but if you remember, we scored the first round even, and if the judges saw it another way, this fight could be all even going into the last round. Neither man has really had the other in much trouble. Bawa was wobbled early in the, second, in the first round by Whitley. Since then, neither fighter has really been wobbled. Bawa scores with the overhand right. Could be up for grabs right here, John. Well, we don't know how the judges have it scored. They've actually got Bawa only up by one point. Whitley, nothing but air with the flying left hand. Well, you know what? This is a bad round here for Whitley thus far. Gonna have to rally quickly. Watch your hands, watch your hands, watch your hands. 
getting hit with a lot of right hands. Nothing behind the punches of Bawa right now. Good right hand countered by Whitley. Here's Bawa bending at the waist again, trying to set up his own uppercut. Both men fatigued, you can tell. Whitley's got his mouth open. Bawa struggling right now. Whitley digging deep. Bawa doing the same. Whitley's a tough guy. If anybody were to go down here now, it would be the turning point of the fight. Whitley trying to last, land that one shot that could possibly turn around here at the end. He's digging that left hand in. I don't know how the judges are gonna score this. They may have it closer than we do. Bawa tires, Whitley tires. Bawa just trying to hold on at this point, probably figuring he's won the fight by decision. And holding and grappling with Whitley. Neither man a decisive edge in the eighth and final round. Should be a close decision. Bawa and Whitley, very close fight. Got to give it to both these super middleweights. Bawa comes in with an unbeaten record, 9-0. and oh. Whitley looking to pull off another upset, as he has recently in the ballroom. We'll be back with the decision in a moment. Bawa and Whitley go the distance. Who wins, who loses? Let's find out Your for Pat. please, ladies and gentlemen. We go to the scorecards, and we have a split decision. Yeah. Judge Battle scores it 77-76, Whitley. Judge Bruni scores it 78-75, Bawa. And Judge Casolini scores it 78-74. The winner by split decision, Derek Double Impact Whitley. Derek Whitley with the shocker sending Scorpion Bawa to his first loss as a professional. Are you surprised, John? I had to fight score to draw. Uh, I'm a little surprised, though. I thought Bawa might get the nod there because overall, I think he landed more shots and was a little more effective. I think uh, Whitley had to uh, rely on that left hand a little bit too much, and he just wasn't as effective with it. So, yeah, I'm surprised that uh, Bawa wasn't given the decision. Boy, what a shocker. Whitley wins it. Not sure if that was the right call, but he is the victor, and he's standing by with John Scheinman. Tough fight tonight, Derek. Yeah, Tell really me why you had so much trouble with Scorpion Bawa. I mean, he, he's tall. He, he, had his, he was using his jab, and he got, he got power. So I just figured I had to try to take him in the later rounds and try to get him tired so I can then try to put my work on him. But he's a tough kid, so you know, I, I don't take nothing from him. He's a strong fighter. I just got to go back to the gym and train, train harder, just extra harder. You cracked him really hard. I think it was in the second round. Did you think you were going to be able to I get him out? I, I thought I had him out in the second round when I hit him hard. But he was, he was, he's moving around. He's doing everything right. You know, when you get hurt, you got to move around and grab on, hold on. And he did, I give him credit, but I did try to take him out, you know, try to load up and try to get him out of there. You've been destroying everyone Scott Wagner puts in front of you in the ballroom boxing series. Even with a losing record, do you think you deserve a ranking now? Yes, I, I really do think I deserve a ranking. I mean, I started off, you know, late in my boxing career, and now I'm just trying to take it one step at a time. I really got my experience fighting in the ring, you know. That's what I did, got my experience fighting in the ring. Derek Whitley escapes with his life here against Scorpion Bawa, but he gets the win. I just want to say uh, thanks to my brothers who gave me the support and be behind me 100%. That's, that's Darren Whitley, and this is Derek Whitley, one of the fighting twins. Let's go back to ringside, Larry and John. All right, thank you, John Scheinman. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, in a moment. Welcome back to ballroom boxing, brought to you tonight, as always, by Geico Auto Insurance. 
And we're joined tonight by Ryan Collins, the former Baltimore Raven, and Ryan standing by with an interview. Ryan. All right, I'm here with Michael Gomez, straight from Ireland. Mike, what are you going to do in that ring tonight? I'm going to win. You going to take him down? I'm going to win. doesn't matter how. I'm just going to win. That's all. That's, all I'm here. That's what I'm here for, to win. I'm just going to go in there and win. Put a show on and win. Now, where did the last name Gomez come from? So, when I first started off boxing, there was a black guy, a lad from the same town, same weight, back in Manchester where I turned pro. And they wouldn't let, they wouldn't let me have uh, my name, my real name, Michael Armstrong. So I had to change it. And uh, I have a hero called Wilfredo Gomez, who's an excellent fighter, three weight world champion. I took his second name. And ever since then, all my fans start wearing sombrero hats, sombrero uh, hats to every fight. And that's where it come from. Well, whatever works for you. All right, back to you, Larry and John. Thank you very much, Ryan Collins. Welcome back to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Larry Michael and John Saraceno. Another fight in the ring. We're ready. We hope you are. Let's get the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for four rounds and is, it a, is a battle of undefeated cruiserweights. Introducing first, out of the red corner to my right, wearing the white trunks with the purple trim. He weighed in at 196 pounds. From Greenbelt, Maryland, with two wins, here is Leon Horsey. And his opponent out of the blue corner to my left, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim. His weight, 190 pounds. He has four wins. From Bartonsville, Pennsylvania, let's welcome Jesse Oldman. Battle of unbeaten cruiserweights. Jesse Oldman's from Bartonsville, Pennsylvania, against Leon Horsey from Greenbelt, Maryland. I expect you to obey my command. Let's take a look at the matchup of the cruiserweights, John. Well, Altman's three-inch at least height advantage, and that could be significant in this fight. Horsey come in six pounds heavier. Both fighters, as you said, Larry, unbeaten. Horsey has really been inactive his last fight, April of 99. So he really hasn't been very active. Altman's has fought okay. all of his professional fights in the calendar year 2000. He is 4-0 with three knockouts most recently. Back September 27th, a four-round victory over Robert Thomas in Delaware. With those other three wins, all stoppages. He's a big, rangy puncher. So something we'll give here tonight. Well, Horsey scored with the left hand there quickly. So Faltman's has been listening to some of the help he's been getting in Easton, Pennsylvania from a certain former heavyweight champion. He should be well prepared. That, of course, being Larry Holmes. Promoted and managed by Larry Holmes, the Easton assassin. So you know he gets good work in the gym. As he faces the southpaw tonight, Leon Horsey. The inactivity of Horsey might come into play here tonight, John. Only time a fighter's been off as long as he's been off, uh, that's not good, let's face it. I mean, ring rust, the fighter's worst enemy. He's not going to get the kind of work he needs in the gym that's going to immediately transfer into a, a live fight like this. Both men, they'll have unblemished records, and they'd hate to see it go down the drain tonight. Solid shot by Horsey, has Altman's just tackling him. A smart, smart move by Jesse Altman's to grab Horsey right around the waist. Horsey knows, though, that he hurt Altman's that time with that shot. Altman's did not have much of an amateur career, Larry. Basically a tough man fighter, had about six or seven fights, maybe another eight amateur fights. His two favorite fighters are George Foreman and Larry Holmes. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Better not say that around Holmes. Yeah. I thought we might see Larry here tonight, but uh, who knows? Maybe he'll walk in. We're not too far from Easton. Great to be on the road with Ballroom Boxing. Ballroom Boxing brought to you by BallroomBoxing.com. Check us out on the web, www.BallroomBoxing.com. Get a chance to... Look over some past fights, the Ballroom Boxing merchandise catalog, as well as pictures of John Saraceno. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know if Almas has figured out yet to use the lead right hand 
against Horsey, who's pawing at him with the jab. He seems to have the left-handed uh, stance by Horsey has Altman's a little bit off balance here. Altman's just 25 years old. Horsey's 28. Understand Horsey has not had a lot of sparring to get ready for this matchup. I don't know if Altman's realized he was going to fight a left-hander. He's throwing the jab a lot. You do have to use the jab against the southpaw, but your primary weapon is typically the lead right hand. I don't know if he's even thrown it once. Horsey with a big shot in the first round. Gets one in at the end of the first as well. Welcome back. Ballroom boxing. Larry Michael with John Saracino in the ring. Two unbeaten cruiserweights. Leon Horsey and Jesse Altman in the first round. I think you have to give the round to Horsey. Not a lot of blood now from the nose of Altman. In the mouth. Right. Good shot. Right hand. And down goes Horsey. Oh, and he is in deep trouble. Fight's over, Larry. I don't know how he's going to recover from this. He's really out of it. The referee should stop the fight. He is out of it for sure. And I don't know if this is what caused it, but he hit his head on the canvas when he went down. His skull bounced off the canvas. He is still very wobbly as they set him down on his stool. I can't believe they stopped the fight, but they did the right thing as Horsey is obliterated in the second round. Well, Altman's got desperate. When that blood started trickling down from his nose, you saw him fight off the ropes there, caught Horsey, and that was it. Good first round by Horsey. We gave it to him 10-9. Well, what a rally. Well, Larry Holmes will be happy when he sees the tape. Leon Horsey being dealt with with the doctors. He's telling the doc, come on, I'm all right. I think his head is cleared now. He's fine. But it was scary there for a moment. He got drilled, John. It was a straight right hand right on the butt. I mean, right on the chin. And Horsey is just realizing what happened. What an explosive start to our series as we leave uh, Maryland. Maybe it's something in the water here. But that was some finish in the second round by Good Jesse Altman. Good to see Horsey's okay, John, because his, his yeah. head did bounce off the canvas. It was such a quick, devastating knockout. He was out when he hit the canvas. Yeah, I think he was out before he went down, but when he hit the canvas, his head bounced off. Let's see if we can get a look at it here. It was right on the butt. Couldn't quite see his head, but that was a vicious knockout. To look into his eyes from ringside and could see he was in no condition to continue. Good move by the referee, Tony Wolf, to stop that fight. So, I, I tell you what, that was pure reflexive action by Horsey even to get up. If you think about it, he wanted to continue. He didn't know what he was really doing. The referee, his first job is to save the fighter from himself, and yep. that's exactly what he did, Larry. I want to see another view of that knockout. I want to see that again. That was almost the perfect punch, John Saracino. I'd say it was a 10. I mean, a perfect 10. Right on the tip of the jaw. Right on the chin, I should say. You talk about sweet chin music. It was Jesse Altman's playing a tune on the chin of Leon Horsey. And guess who's here? Pat O'Malley with the word. Your back. attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The winner by TKO in round two, 20 seconds into the round, Jesse Altman. Boy, what a devastating knockout by Holtman, huh? Wow, Larry Holmes is going to be proud of his fighter tonight. Let's see what he has to say about that one-punch thunder. Let's go back to John Scheinman. Jesse rocked in the first round. You come out for the second round with a bloody nose. Tell me about the picture-perfect right hand that finished Leon Horsey. Well, he was uh, getting carried away. He must have thought he had me hurt from the first round, and uh, he just came in. Uh, with his foot on the inside of mine, and I just dropped the right hand right on him. How much pro problem was it for you to fight a left-hander? Were you prepared for that coming into the fight? Uh, no, I'm not prepared for him, uh, but that's why we're starting off with him now, I believe. Uh, this is my second one. My last fight was a left-hander, and uh, so far, so good. But uh, I'll tell you what, they're tricky. They're, uh, you, don't, you don't mess around with them. Powers, the great equalizer, and Jesse Altman showed it tonight. Let's go back to ringside to Larry and John. 
Jesse Altman now 5-0, 4 by knockout. I'm sure we'll see him in the future. We'll be back with more ballroom boxing after a timeout. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Enjoying the ballroom boxing card tonight. We're in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. John Saracino has polled those in attendance. Are the people here having fun, John? Rousing success. Everybody's having a good time. Let's get back to more good boxing action. Another great fight in the ring, as is Pat O'Malley. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission Executive Director Greg Serve, Guest Executive Director Patrick Vanella of the Maryland State Athletic Commission. Commissioner of the PA State Athletic Commission, George Picado. Ballroom Boxing on Michaels 8th Avenue, Glen Burnie. Promoter Scott Wagner and matchmaker Josh Hall present this six round bout in the lightweight division. This eight round bout in the lightweight division. The referee in charge is Gary Rosado. Introducing the boxers. To my left, out of the blue corner, wearing the trunks in red, white, and blue, weighing 140 pounds. He comes from Las Vegas, Nevada, with a record of eight, 11, and one, three by knockout. Please welcome a well, Moon Tiger Abdullah. <laughs> to my right out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks, trimmed in green, white, and orange, weighing 143 pounds. He hails from Dublin, Ireland, with a record of 21 and three, 13 via the KO. Please welcome Michael Gomez. Michael Gomez and Awel Abdullahi in the ring. Let's take a look at the matchup. Well, Gomez only 5'5", five, five. Abdullahi much, much bigger at 5'7". You see the weights relatively even. A little bit of a reach advantage for Abdullahi. Let's see if he can take advantage of it. Many stories to tell about these two guys. First, I guess we can get the name situation out of the way. Michael Gomez, really not his real name. Born Michael Armstrong, Dublin, Ireland, now fighting out of England. But five years ago, when he turned professional, there was another Michael Armstrong that fought in England in the same weight class, Larry. So he changed his name to Gomez. In case you're wondering how he ended up with that Hispanic surname, Wilfredo Gomez, the great Hispanic fighter, was his favorite boxer, and that's what he changed it to. And for Awel Abdullah, this is his 11th fight of the year 2000. So to say he's been active is an understatement. Abdullah has fought just about every month. Actually, more than that. Fought twice in August. Twice in September. His 
Despite a schedule for six rounds. Dula has the powerfully built body, but doesn't have a lot of knockouts to his credit, just three. Watch the heads, watch the heads, he watch the heads. that fight he had with Jermaine Fields back at the ballroom and Michaels. And down in Glen Burnie. That's right. When he fought that draw, and you know, a lot of people thought Abdullah won that fight, and he may have. Fields fortunate to escape with the draw. Gomez promoted by Frankie Warren in England. He's fought all but one of his bouts in England and Ireland. Abdullah trying to fight off the ropes. Before this fight got started, Gomez was working himself into a frenzy. Did you check that out? Yeah, he, he comes with a lot of action, a lot of fury. He's a very peppy fighter. Almost reminds you of a little Rain Man scene. He doesn't throw as much and is quite as forceful in his attack. It stands very close, not afraid to take two to give one. Abdullah sneaks in a left hand and another left by Abdullah. As Gomez is up against the ropes a little bit. For what it's worth, Gomez is ranked as the number one contender by the World Boxing Organization at 130 pounds at junior lightweight. This fight, of course, being fought over the junior lightweight limit at lightweight. And he's the British Commonwealth champion. In fact, he's got a fight coming up, Larry, in December against Ian McLeod, former Commonwealth champion over in England. And they're not considering this a tune-up at all. He still needs a lot of experience, not quite ready to fight for the title yet, spoke with his manager earlier today. Gomez trying to work inside on Abdullah. This combination by Gomez may be strained low with the one shot below the belt. Abdullah has some raw skills. As we saw him against Jermaine Fields, he can hang in against some pretty strong punches. Well, his last 15 opponents had a combined record of 158 and 15. That's 90%, wow. Larry, so he's, he's been in tough. That's world class. Round one to a close. Back with more ballroom boxing from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We'll be back. So in action for the first round, a very evenly fought first round. Both fighters chose to stay in close, go toe-to-toe -to -toe on the inside. Gomez might have gotten the better of that round, just by a little. At the end of round one, Gomez went to the corner of Abdullah and just stood there staring at Abdullah, one of the cornermen for Abdullah. Stepped between their fighter and Gomez, and Gomez retreated. You see how wide Abdullah puts his stance there. He's a little off balance. He just barely got hit and rocked back a little bit. Abdullah is trained by Leroy Caldwell, former heavyweight contender from the 70s. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds. Gomez moving that right hand, trying to start a bolo punch working as they clear the corner of Abdullah of some ice. You know, Abdullah, of course, from Ghana, claimed to have another 22 fights in Africa between 1993 and 1998, which he claims he won all of them. They're unrecorded. You get a warning from the referee against Gomez as Abdullah lost his balance on a shot. Fighters often claim, particularly ones from Africa, you know, because record keeping, of course, is very shoddy in a lot of countries that they have additional wins. Uh, they, they rarely take credit for losses. So who knows if he has 22 mo or, or wins or not more. But 8 and 11 is the fight facts record for Abdullah. Abdullah says he won the South African Championship in 1998. Well, he's going to have to find Gomez first. And what he's doing is he's lunging at him. He really set with good balance. So Gomez is a very well-skilled fighter. Neither guy, obviously, a power puncher. I mean, the volume of punches is going to have to win this fight. Going to have to have a clever ring tactician, a guy who knows how to play chess better in the ring than the other guy. I mean, you can see this fight clearly going the distance from what we've seen so far. Dulai up against the ropes once again. Gomez has a lot of movement, a lot of movement, a lot of head movement. And this is not going to be an easy fight to score. 
judges really have to concentrate on a fight like this, making sure each scoring blow is indeed a scoring blow on a point in their mind. There's a lot of fainting, there's some parrying, blocking of punches. Gomez has some pretty good foot movement. Trying to look for an opening. A lot of fainting by Gomez, trying to get Abdullah to commit. Clean break, clean break. Like punching break. with one foot off the canvas, taking away some of his leverage that way. Interesting, the first round they went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This round they fought more from a distance. Good job by the referee. Abdullah and Gomez, two of the books. We'll be back. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Larry Michael, John Saracino, and as always, John Scheinman with a look at the scorecard through two. John? I'll tell you, John, you're right. This is a very tough fight to score. I've got it 2019. Michael Gomez after two rounds. I made the second round even. Um, uh, um, Abdullah is just such a mirror of Gomez. He fights whatever style Gomez wants to bring to him. If he wants to stay on the outside, he's happy. If he wants to go on the inside, he's, he's happy to oblige him and do that too. And so far, I think he's fighting him on very even terms. Dula has Gomez up against the ropes. Gomez staying there. And he's got to get off those ropes. I also scored a second round even. Very, very tight round. Good comment by John Scheinman. Abdullah fighting the fight that Gomez is yes. bringing. Really not doing anything. Uh, Good left hand there by Abdullah. Right to the jaw. Might have stunned Gomez a he bit. Did. He did. Saw a wince. wince. Yep. yep. Feel like one of those guys you really could never count him out. He's so tough. Gomez slowing down here in round three a bit. You know, Gomez's attempt at gamesmanship with that macho walk across the ring at the end of the first round, almost taunting Abdullah, certainly hasn't worked. Abdullah is not going anywhere here tonight. Abdullah trying to time that uppercut, tries it again. There's a low shot by Gomez along the hip area. Gomez has his head right in the chest of Abdullah, gets a warning from the referee. Boy, is Abdullah ripped or what, Larry? Look at his physique. Sometimes I'm mistaken for him. Sometimes. <laughs> Gomez trying to score the lead right. Gomez hasn't landed that many scoring blows in this round, but Abdullah's done a little bit more, I think, to this point. A little swelling around the eyes of Gomez, and the crowd beginning to get behind Abdullah a little yeah, bit. Yeah, interesting. Because when Gomez was introduced as being from Dublin, Ireland, the Irish contingent in here let up a roar. Gomez trying to corner Abdullah there, and Abdullah would have none of that. He just basically ran out of the corner. Abdullah trying to time that uppercut, trying to get Gomez in the way in. Good move by the referee to warn Gomez. Gomez is really, I think he's taking the worst of it on the inside. Abdullah the stronger man. Abdullah fighting nicely off the ropes. Not all those, really not punching. Yeah, not all those punches are landing, but it, it, it looks good. And depending on where you're sitting as a, as a judge, you may score it for Abdullah. Another competitive round here in the Ballroom Boxing Series. We'll be back. Box. Round four of a very tight matchup. Michael Gomez and Awel Abdullah. Abdullah in the white trunks, Gomez in the black trunks. Gomez from Dublin, Ireland. Abdullah from Las Vegas, Nevada, originally from Ghana. Of course, plenty of great fighters have come out of Ghana. And yes, I asked him if he knew Azuma Nelson, and he does. Of course he does. <laughs> How about Ike Corte? I didn't ask him that. But Ike Corte is not the fighter that Azuma Nelson was. No. Nice left hand stuck in there by Gomez. Wow. With the breeze from Abdullah's miss left Abdullah, that time. Abdullah's missing on a lot of shots. He really is. He's missing on far more than he's connecting. And give credit to Gomez. Spend a lot of energy when you miss like that. Gomez a little reluctant to come in now. Trying to spin Abdullah around. Gomez has more tricks in his bag than Abdullah. Abdullah might be just the stronger man right now. Good double left hook downstairs by Gomez and then ducking the, sh the right hand counter. 
by Abdullah over the top. Good move by the Irish fighter. The fighter has what you would call a sizzling right hand. No. Gomez looking for an opening, almost turned southpaw yeah, that time. Yeah, he faked him on it a little bit. He's got a nice spin move there, but he's got to add some scoring blows with that. We're seeing more dancing than fighting here in yeah. this round. A lot of foot movement from both fighters. Tried to counter right hand Gomez, but he missed. This combination by Gomez inside of Dulai just has to aggressively move forward to see if he, can, if he can find a shot somewhere. And the thing is, both those punches he threw missed. And you gotta be careful not to give the guy credit just for throwing. They have to land. Dulai once again up on the ropes. Gomez scores with one punch, the uppercut inside. So many punches he's missing, Larry Abdullah. He's missing by a lot, too. Gomez is continuing the pressure. Abdullah might not be able to keep up. You know, Abdullah does not really have the fastest hands. He's kind of deceptive. He's got fast feet, but his, his punch is like a second and a half slow. That's too slow well, to connect. Maybe, maybe not a second and a half, maybe a half a second. Gomez looking for an angle, trying to get to the right. To Abdullah's left side. A busy round for Michael Gomez from Dublin, Ireland, here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. International flavor to ballroom boxing. Welcome back to ballroom boxing. We're in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Larry Michael with John Saracino. John Scheinman is with us as well. John, very close fight. How do you have it scored? I thought Gomez forged back into the lead in that last round, 39-38. Um, but he's going to need to exercise a lot of patience to win this bout. Abdullah has this ability to, to judge the rhythm of his opponent and stay, and stay with him and fight at whatever speed that the opponent's fighting at. And Gomez is just looks frustrated. He wanted to go on the attack in the first round, and he's really backed off of way too much in these last three rounds. I think he needs to return to applying the pressure. Abdullah scores with the right, Gomez scores with the left. I agree completely with John. That's right the first time in three years. Right down to his score. Wow. Sure sign the apocalypse is upon us. You and Scheinman agreeing completely along with the score. Either that or it's an after effect from Three Mile Island. We've been drinking the same water. Well, Gomez is a lot more effective with his aggression in this round, the fifth round. And so is Abdullah. Ballroom Boxing brought to you by Zero to 80. Great hospitality for the people here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania as we hit the road for the first time in the Ballroom Boxing Series. Dulai changing to southpaw quickly, then switching back. Good work inside by Gomez. Abdullah trying to get something done himself. Dulai almost pinned up in there by Gomez, who won't let him off. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds. Good combination by Gomez. That was his best combination of the night. It's beginning to get through a little bit on Awel Abdullah. He's going to have to take a few more chances. Abdullah getting a little sloppy on defense now. Gomez still has his quickness. Abdullah is slowing down a little bit. Yes, he is. Abdullah. Nice right hand by Gomez, right on the lips of Abdullah. Went 10 rounds in his last fight. That's the first time he had gone that long since, uh, well, in about a couple of years. So he can go the distance. But certainly, Gomez looks the more energetic fighter here in the fifth round. Michael Gomez turning up the heat a little bit this round. Abdullah's got to get closer and close off the distance.
Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Is Michael Gomez really beginning to impose his will on Awel Abdullah last round? Well, his combination punching began to break down Abdullah. Abdullah refusing to get close enough at times to really mount a successful offensive attack. He's got to do a lot more. You see Abdullah's legs everywhere here to start the sixth round. Nine minutes to go. You kind of feel this fight slipping away from Abdullah. And according to the form, Michael Gomez, the number one contender for the WBO, is carrying the fight into the later rounds with a lot of efficiency and a lot of strength. He's been a more composed, efficient fighter, and he has come on the last two rounds on our unofficial scorecard, leading 49-47 through five. Well, again, we caution you, some of those rounds very close. Good body work by Gomez, just coming in. Works the body and gets Abdullah up against the ropes again. Abdullah just not a big enough puncher really to keep Gomez off of him in any form. I mean, Gomez just dogged him throughout the fight, at times backing off a little bit. Gomez has great head movement. He's trying to slip every single punch from yes. Abdullah. Gomez continuing to land that left hook on the inside. Do I really not showing much of a jab? Not no, a jab really and it's certainly not an effective one. And that's allowing Gomez to use his jab at times. I think Abdullah is somewhat frustrated, John, just because the head movement from Gomez really hasn't slowed up, almost has picked up. He's very quick. Good point. Shifting from right to left, trying to get an angle on Abdullah. He really has not stood still the whole fight. That's a good example. Yep. Gomez's movement affecting Abdullah. Sort of like you, very shifty. Uh, I've been called shifty, yes. It's the first time I've been called shifty in Harrisburg, though. Gomez continues to move forward, continues to bob and weave. Dulai looking for some kind of opening. Dulai doesn't have a lot of knockouts to his credit. In fact, just three. His last knockout came back in 1991. Checked at 92 in Ghana. So he's never had a knockout in the United States. He breaks the back. Go push it off. Let's go. Dulai a little wobbly right now. And his legs did not look sturdy to start this round. I'm not sure why that is, but very unsteady. Gomez again spinning Abdullah around. You know, it's one thing to have a very cut physique. It's another thing to be able to translate into meaningful punches. That's what I always say about myself. More to come on Ballroom Boxing when we return. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing, brought to you by Toyota Every Day. Larry Michael with John Saraceno, John Scheinman, along as well in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, tonight in the Ballroom Boxing Series. Six rounds in the books for Gomez and Abdullah. John Scheinman, what do you think? 59-56, Gomez is pulling away after a slow start. You know, I, you know, he didn't show these skills earlier in the fight, but now he's displaying a lot of very nuanced boxing skills. He's clearly well-schooled. He uses his left shoulder very well to prop up his opponent. He throws his left hand from a variety of angles. He slips punches well. He's got good foot movement. This guy's a lot better than he looked in the first half of the fight, and he's really starting to put his skills on display. Do you agree, John Saraceno? Once again, I hate to say it, but I agree with everything you said. You and Scheinman. And, look, I, and I have it 59-56. You're looking very similar tonight. Body shot by Gomez with Abdullah up against the ropes again. That style by Gomez. A constant movement, bobbing and weaving, has bothered Abdullah offensively. Really has never gotten it untracked. He gave him the third round, and that's been it. Well, you know, you see Gomez. Gomez has a lot of skills, a lot of movement, knows his way around the ring. Abdullah, though he's a veteran, has been fighting since 1990. Maybe not as skilled as Gomez. I do like Abdullah's trunks, though. You do. You're a yes. I'd say he's winning the trunk war. You're a proud American. Yes, I am. Dulai trying to fire himself up a little bit here in the seventh round. This fight is scheduled for eight. Well, he's 
he's almost pity patting with his punches now is Abdullah, not really turning them over with any kind of force or power. And I think Gomez realizes he has them where he wants them at this point. Abdullah is starting to throw his punches even slower and without authority. Gomez continues to move forward, head in the chest of Abdullah. And Gomez, 23 years old, has learned his lessons well in the ring. A great head movement, yeah. John. See the way Bob's low. Let's see, he's a Ramey and Seymour, a little more defense and a little less offense. Gomez looking over here, winking at us. He's done a great job in this fight. Impressive performance against a very tough guy, Awel Abdullah. Good spin move there. Didn't necessarily jump on him, but he got out of the way. Big right hand, wow. Abdullah walked right into it. Right down the middle, Gomez threw that. Clipped him right on the whiskers. Abdullah might be stunned. Trying to fight off the ropes. Maybe the ropes holding him up a bit. I just don't see any steam in Abdullah's punches, Larry. And they're firing Gomez with three minutes to go. It would appear Gomez leads. We'll be back. Welcome back to Ballroom Boxing. Action from the seventh round. Gomez and Abdullah. Watch the right hand of Gomez. Boom, right there on the chin. Abdullah got rocked a bit. Eighth and final round here. With three minutes to go, John Scheinman, quickly, what's your score? 69-65, Abdullah's gonna need a knockout to win. I think the view from ringside is the same. He's stealing all my lines. <laughs> I'm not sure Abdullah has the power to knock him out, though. Well, Gomez is going to have to get incredibly careless right now to lose this fight. Unless it's been horribly scored. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be the case. But you never know. Sometimes the fights are scored really screwed. You think so? No, that never happened. No, not boxing. Boxing. I'll tell you what, uh, in the ballroom boxing series, we've had very, very few bad decisions. This is true. Yeah. That's a hallmark of the series, one of the hallmarks. Your suits is the other hallmark. <laughs> Gotta get you a tuck. Speaking of, Ray Gomez and Abdullah. Speaking of hallmark, you forgot to send me a birthday card. Uh, when was your birthday? Last March. <laughs> was it? <laughs> I might forget again next year. <laughs> punch him up. Get the punches up, Mike. Gomez punch just bullying Abdullah around the ring right now. You know, if I'm Gomez right now, well, I guess he, he's not fearing anything that Abdullah has in his gloves, but I think right now I'm boxing and moving a little bit more, but. Gomez wait, might want wait, the knockout. Let him go, let him go, let him go. It, that's it. I don't think wait, he's listen, gonna get guys, that listen. either. Abdullah knocked out back on August the 27th by Julio Diaz in the fifth round in Las Vegas. And that's the only time I think he's been stopped in his career. Very which, good, you're right. Which began in 1990. Dulai misses wildly with the uppercut. As the eighth and final round wears on. And Dulai is out of gas, basically. You see the way he bounced off yeah. the ropes. Yeah. He was looking for some energy. He's trying to gut this thing out right now. At, uh, trying to land a home run shot, but it's not going to happen. Fans should be cheering, actually, because Abdullah is really fatigued at this point and just fighting on guts. Gomez could go another three rounds. Yeah. As Bill Clancy would say, he looks fresh as a daisy. I don't know about fresh as a daisy, but he looks strong enough. Freak, freak. Go. Let's go. Look at the angles Gomez trying to find. Still in the eighth and final round. <laughs> Closing seconds of this fight. Should be a hard-earned victory by Michael Gomez. After a very tight start to this fight, Gomez turns up the heat. And would appear he will go home with a decision win here in the Ballroom Boxing Series. I've got him winning by five points, but I'm going to guess that the judges have it close. At least one or two of them. What do you think? I disagree. We will find out when we return. The decision is next. We'll be back. 
Action from the eighth and final round, Abdullah and Gomez. A very close fight, John Saracino, but it seems to me Gomez, I have to agree, is the winner of this fight. Well, Gomez pulled away in the middle rounds and really never allowed Abdullah to get into the fight with his swarming style. Let's see who won the fight. Was it Gomez? Let's find out from Pat O'Malley. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. We go to the scorecards for this one. Judge Battle scores it 80 to 72. Judge Bruni scores it 77 75. And Judge Castellini scores it 77 75. The winner by unanimous decision, Michael Gomez. John Saracino was right. There was one scorecard 77 75. There was two at 77 75. So a little closer than we expected. Abdullah, I can't believe it. But certainly no surprise that Michael Gomez goes home the winner. No, he was a clear-cut winner here in the season. Yeah, John Gomez was the winner. Not a surprise. How far do you think Gomez could go? I mean, the guy obviously has a lot of boxing skills. Very elusive defensively. Not much of a puncher, but a skilled combination puncher. I think he could become a champion. John Scheinman standing by the eye-to-eye -eye interview with Michael Gomez. Michael, it seemed like it took you a little while to get into the fight. I, we, we thought you started rolling around the fourth round. Yeah, like I say, um, he's a tough lad. It takes me a while. To, I'm a 12-round fighter. I'm, I'm, I'm British and WBO and Continental champion. I'm number one in the world. You know what I mean? I'm only, a, I'm only a super featherweight fighter. I've had to go up to lightweight for this fight, so I put a bit of weight on, a bit sluggish. It took me a while to get going, but when I got going, you see the movement. Maybe I'm not as motivated for non-title fights, but when a world title fight comes, I'll be ready. You know what I mean? I've got some good moves, I've got good power, I can take a good shot, I can give a good shot. It was a cracking fight, I've got to give all the respect to my opponent because he's a very tough lad, okay. took good good shots and he come back with some good shots. Now you weighed in 143 for this fight, I think, or at least 140. Well, where are you more comfortable? I mean, you're ranked number one in the world at 130. Where would you prefer to be fighting? 130, definitely. I weighed in at 137 for this fight. That's what I weighed, 137. I've gone up to lightweight. I'm, I'm only a 135, I can't fight this way. I'm not strong enough. But like I say, I don't need to get the fight to get the money. That's what it's all about, but I'm definitely a 135, and that's where I'm going to win the world title. Now your management says that they're not moving, they're not rushing you into a world championship. What are some of the things you feel that you need to do before you get that world title shot against Freitas? Yeah, I'm ready for Asselin Freitas now. I'm ready to take him out now. I'm, I'm tough, I'm exciting, and I enjoy this game. I love it. I'm getting paid to do something I enjoy. You know what I mean? I'm ready for it now. But my, my trainers and my manager wants me to take the European title first. Whatever, whatever. I'm ready for whatever. Michael Gomez chomping at the bid for Frietas for the World Championship. He's on his way. Let's go back to ringside, Larry and John. So Gomez calling out Asselina Fritas. I don't know if he's ready for Popo yet. Might be a little green. Needs a little more seasoning, but it won't be long. Ballroom Boxing is brought to you by Toyota every day. By Budweiser, the king of beers. By Geico. 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on your car insurance by lastminutetravel.com, by 0to80.com, and by whatanetwork.com. Well, all in all, a pretty good road trip as the ballroom boxing crew heads up to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I hope you enjoyed the fights. We did. Can't wait to come back. February. Plenty of action, competitive, a lot of knockouts as usual. More excitement per square inch ballroom boxing. There's nothing like it. For John Saracino and John Scheinman, I'm Larry Michael. We'll see you next time on Ballroom Boxing.